Hello and welcome to Dells Gaming and this is from the Depths Designer and it's been a little while since I've put some uh, video up mainly work has kept me away for the last little week but also there's a lot of changes happening at the moment which is good a lot of stabilizing uh, but a lot of changes which are I think all good but just changes um, now I'm not gonna go over most of the changes that are coming up I'm gonna wait until they go into stable and they are um, more balanced etc so we can see what is going to be near the end result not uh, not just speculation at this moment um, one new little thing has been flags now flutter in the wind so I won't go into the whole tagging of images um, I'm sure so I think someone else has done a video on that um, but basically just the fact that it flutters in the wind I quite like that but the main bit is you can tell which direction the wind is if you get into sailing ships rather than it always just pointing backwards which could be handy in this particular episode we're going to carry on a little bit with the US design focused ships but also first of all I want to have a look at a little comment that was put up about the cram cannons in the last particular episode so I just want to clear something up which I partially got wrong and also um, just a, a point of interest etc and that is with cram cannons sharing um, the different types of ammo boxes so here we've got two cram cannons and I'm going to turn on the the information so you can see um, sorry the UI so you can see the information so the one on the left here has an ID of 1298 and the one this side has 1299 so this is the lower number now if we just simply put on if I go to cram cannons we simply put on an ammo box we start with an ammo box and you can see immediately if about halfway down you'll just see there's in one box is each and if we put it down in the center you'll see that it this one has zero and this one has one so it's gone to the lowest ID going to a connector if we use a page pellet just going to a connector you'll hear we'll see that the again it's only connecting on there now with auto loaders though so okay let's just go into a connector block it only goes to the gun with the lowest ID so that's the first point which was correct on what I was saying right now with auto loaders so if I put a manual auto loader so that let's get it so that we can put one on the side and the rear uh, no side and the top there we go there and there so now we have an auto loader now at the, the effect of an auto loader if I just get an HE pellet is normally if we put a HE against the connector we just simply get a uh, value of where are we 0.5 explosive material blocks it boxes so it has like a 0.5 which seems a bit weird but that's the way it goes if I now put it onto the top of these loaders you'll notice now it's gone to 1.5 so it has a, a, a times three advantage so there we go now if I put it in the, the center you'll notice this one here has a one so it's only doubled and this one has 1.5 so the lower ID number is getting the full advantage the higher ID number is only getting a doubling which is still double so not gonna be unenthusiastic about that but it does mean you can join them on the um, auto loaders which is where I was wrong but the ammo boxes ammo boxes it says it's connected to one ammo box here but it has no ammo box actually here although it shows connection whereas here it is showing one ammo box um, so ammo boxes still are not getting pulled across they still only go to the lowest ID even on the hardness just make sure there's no other little change on those but interestingly let's just check I just want to check one thing 147 147 uh, 114 interestingly though with the ammo boxes the actual reload time is getting increased on both sides but the UI is only showing um, 
one ammo box but they both get down to 1.14 so mm, it is sort of working but not consistently personally i think there maybe needs a bit of a checking on that because it seems like um whether it's a matter of either block it so it can't share or make it consistent so that they share when they equally share or uh, you know at the moment it seems like it's not necessarily consistent but hey ho that's from the depths so next on to the building and we're going to carry on with the u.s um, navy themed ships where we previously built the Arizona with the nice big triple cam cram cannons and what I like to look at now is a ship or a couple of ships to do some support for this um, Arizona and we're going to carry on the theme now the theme I'm thinking of for the US Navy ships is some hard-hitting um, main guns with lots of AA and um, AA defenses and what I'm thinking of is the USS Omaha at this moment as a design of ship because it was a, a, a late 1930s ship. Now, another little bit here is I'm not going to go through all the history of the USS Omaha, but some people would like to hear all of that information. So, down in the description is a link to a new little channel I'm doing which is just purely about the history of various ships that I like building in from the depths so we have got the USS Omaha there is also a video on the Kingfisher which is a, um, a sea pl float plane which was uh, launched by the Omaha and also um, the US Clemson class destroyers which this will also be the mothership for in our fleet so please go and have a look at the other channel and, and let me know or if you'd like me talking about various um, historical elements of the ships whilst I'm building it let me know and maybe I'll continue and put those videos on this channel instead but let me know what you think but in the meantime I'm going to carry on the, the build and the other part I'm going to look at is because we didn't have a mix of weaponry we're going to have some cram cannons which I've looking at this particular cram cannon here rather than an APS version uh, and then secondary guns we didn't look at detection systems and setting them up for the different types of guns and targets we're going to be going against but um, let me get the first part of the ship built and then uh, we'll be back and this is the current iteration of the USS Omaha or the Dell's Navy Omaha as I'm calling it the light cruiser and I've tried to keep the profile roughly matching uh, the correct ship but now we're gonna have a look at uh, a couple of items predominantly the just to, to go through the main guns now I've chosen the um, cram cannons here and I've used a 652 mil as a like a medium the equivalent of a six inch and I did actually build an APS version and a cram version. Now, there is a number of changes coming through on the APS side, which will reduce its rate of fire and damage somewhat. So at the moment, a 170mm APS, which takes up the same space of turret and um, underneath, will do about four times the damage it'll have a rate of fire about double if not more maybe two and a half times more and damage will be similar sort of area uh, a little bit more he actually at the moment um, but less ap depending on the shell or type you, you use etc without using hesh just using a standard composite he solid uh, kinetic damage would be a little bit lower uh, sorry a little bit higher and HE a little higher so I reckon about four times damage now with the the coming changes in APS I'm expecting the APS and maybe the crams will come up in level um, so we'll see anyway I'm gonna go with crams because it fits in with the view we've got for the ships the other bit I was going to have a look at now is detection systems and setting up your 
your detection for the type of enemy you're going for. So first of all, you need to decide, um, and you must have done that already in building your ship, what is going to be the primary target for your vessel. Now, in this case, we're going to be going for close range um, vessels, um, smallish. So there'll be two types of vessels that we'll be going for small slow small fast and we've got uh, two ais on this ship if i go here we've got um, a, a prime nav and primary and the secondaries now the primary and nav is to know basically look after this main gun and do most of the uh, navigation secondaries have casement guns and all the AA guns and they will be more aimed to go at the fastest closest target so first thing I'm going to do is on the AA itself if I go down here is set up the priority on it so we've added a target prioritization algorithm this is all standard so far so I'm just going to set it up the way I would so set all to zero then my primary concern is range so the further away it is the less i want to uh, you know less chance i want to be going for it so we'll give that a minus 30. now with the primary guns actually speed is going to be a negative so i'm going to give the speed about just a little bit of of negativity um, so that the faster it is the less chance i I've, I've got for going for it altitude not too worried about it i'm gonna give a slight because for the primary guns i don't want them firing at aircraft i want them to go for land targets where possible so we'll give it a minus one for the altitude um going up blocks now on this one um yeah blocks can be a slight i'm gonna give it a small amount it'll go for the largest uh of the closest targets if that makes sense uh weapons now weapons is the number of blocks given to weapons so i'm not too worried about those crew has it got an ai again with that will skew skew it um actually all of these propulsion they will all skew it towards big ships if i put a positive value on these so actually i most really want smaller value so the less guns it's got actually the more chance i've got of actually wanting to attack it which may sound counterintuitive, but it's to make sure I go for smaller ships rather than big ships. AI, AI I'll leave, propulsion I'll leave, um, an engine I'm not worried about. So we'll leave it on that. So most of it is actually minus signs to make... Um, are we, look, don't they end up with lots of minus figures rather than plus figures? Okay, so we've set that. So we are going to have go for close range slow targets we will now go and set up the other ai to do the slightly different um selection so set to a zero now this is going to be very much totally about just hit the the fastest and the f uh, sorry the closest and fastest target um an altitude i'm not worried about um if anything a, a slight plus on it no we're good not worried about altitude size i'm actually gonna have a minus on size um i'm actually the smaller targets i want this to go for uh propulsion if it's got propulsion then we want to attack it uh, about uh, about 0.5 and same with engines just a little bit on the engines and ai if it's got an ai um a few ai blocks then aim for it weapons not too worried so that should should get us aircraft predominantly um although i haven't done the air, the altitude well anything that's moving fast so now the next bit is setting up the detection systems now i first of all have various detection systems and um i won't if you go into the build menu you'll notice under ai the detection systems have all different abilities and properties and advantages in general you're um, starting on the right um, 
we'll ignore the sonar boys for the moment but radar generally has good range but doesn't get give a good bearing to the target but gives good range to the target and as you get down from a radar radar 90 um, the range that these work is better so uh, and also the number of times a second it gives a result to the AI to be able to work out where the enemy is so radar 360 range of one radar 90 it's got um, Oh, it's actually still actually that's actually only got a relative range of one as well i thought that oh sorry radar 360 is 0.5 my apologies radar 90 is one and the tracker is a range of two but the tracker has got to have received the fact that the uh, target exists before it can track it sonar obviously underwater infrared is generally um looking at it is similar to camera um, if, if we look at the, the, the two areas their actual range and detection but they're just going to aim for hot parts is going to define how easy it is to spot a target and camera as we can see it's going to use visual sensors the other bit here is visual sensors are very good at getting the bearing to a target but not the range uh, we then have range finders, which, as you would expect, um, are actually reasonable at getting the the range to a target. They're also quite reasonable at getting the bearing. So the bearing's set at point 0.1, which is not bad, and their range is not too bad on these as well. So you basically you need a suite of sensors. So I build these little um, towers here and then I build some little pods down below which have a visual sensor to get me on bearing, a range sensor, sorry, um, coincidence range finder to get the range of it and then I usually put a camera on there as well and that's going to give me pretty damn good bearing accuracy onto the target. For secondaries I will tend to use um, radar systems or in this case i've used the radar system and here we've got a radar lock on so we're going to get the range to the target and we're going to use a visual camera to get the bearing to the target we also have a secondary primary detection system at the back so if the front one gets knocked off knocked out by uh, incoming fire the rear would still be able to um, give information to the ai about the target so all this information how does it get processed well in the visual cam if we point at one of the items we bring up these um this ui which shows you the various errors etc trying to target a particular target quite simply now we've got mainframe index here now what i do like to name my mainframes so you've got name frame main, name just to make sure you know which mainframe you're actually dealing with so we start with the, the primary detection equipment in here you can set how um how what priority you give to different equipment now to be honest i just auto adjust and it adjusts the figures based upon that particular detection systems um, accuracy and I lay it like that you can go and change these um, I don't personally but um, I'm sure some people do just to fine-tune their detection systems um, but in general I don't find it necessary the main one I adjust is the center bit here, which is the bearing average times. And quite simply, it all depends on, again, the type of vehicle. So if you're going for slow vehicles, large vehicles, you want your gun to be have um, you know, a fairly good area effect at where it's going to be firing at. So you can have these these averaging times quite high so for my cram cannons here I'm going to set this up to the bearing average to be about four seconds um, 
because I think that will get the, the bearing of the, the ship where it's going to be assuming it's not turning too fast the range ranging can also go up we're going to put that up to about five seconds because um, again it's assuming it's not too fast which is the type of vehicles we're aiming at then um, the range is not going to change too much so by having it uh, 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 averaging over a, a large period we get an area of effect a little tighter on where it's actually going to be and speed calculation we'll leave at five at the moment uh, that's fine now how this all works if i bring in a, a target just for the moment and we'll, we'll see the bearing its plots come up so i've just brought in a few um, ships now you can see here if we go back to the main there we go um, if we go range we can see all of these plots and the average between all these plots now the more detection systems you've got running the more points you've got and therefore your average line has got more plots to more points to plot against so if we work out our position error here we can see our error is cutting down yeah occasionally going high but is within a reasonable area there for get some slow ships i think that would be okay now if we bring down this bearing average time if we go to the bearing error we can see actually getting quite a big bearing error that error we're getting a bearing error there um i'll put that back up to four and our bearing errors zero most of the time occasionally getting wrong right position error let's see so we've got three meter if we take our range estimate down oops let's grab it again the range estimate is varying now up to about five meters if we or the, the position error if we bring this back up again we can see our position error is actually a little tighter in this particular environment so we've got some slow targets here so uh, that's okay i just brought in a few marauders to to destroy whilst we are looking at this here so um yeah that's gonna work for these guns quite nicely especially at this closer sort of range our bearing errors within a, a meter or our position errors yeah roughly about one meter which is more than enough for the, considering the accuracy of the guns we have anyway so next we have the secondaries which will be firing at small fast targets but close um let's say mainly aircraft who have will have fairly fast rates of turn will be changing speed so most of the guns are effectively area of effect weapons they're firing in the general area to make sure we're firing roughly in the right area we actually want these averaging times to be fairly low uh, so that because we know that the bearing is going to change relatively quickly um, as an example so we want to be able to quickly change where we are pointing our secondary weapons same for the um, ranging the ranging is less so we would still keep that a reason that their rate of range is not going to change as much as the bearing unless they do a full 180 in which case then yes the range will change but I tend to have that a little bit higher and then the speed calculation again that may change so we're going to put that around two i think would be a good starting point and you can change this depending on different factions or different types of ships you're coming against but uh, uh, in all of this this isn't like the best way of setting it up this is just what i do and what you need to think about when playing um for my very big battleship guns some of these bearing and ranging information is almost up the maximum of 10 seconds because they're expected to only fire at almost static very large targets so we can get a nice long ranging so let's just bring in some example ships so i've brought in some ships 
and also some aircraft so we can now see on the secondaries if we get an error four or five meters here at the moment we've got a charger coming in as well so we should be able to see um, how this yeah, is getting about three two three meters um, speed is fairly see, speed stays fairly constant that doesn't change too much it's usually the the position error is the one you want to keep and keeping around two meters actually we're going for the charger which got in very close to us um, because that was the uh, that's going to be the priority target and uh, oh dear the charger seems to have uh, completely destroyed the ship oh well um, didn't work work in, uh, against that particular ship now did it But despite all the damage, uh, we're repairing and we're still attacking the enemy ships. So uh, one good thing of making the ship fairly resilient as uh, such, which was uh, one of the primaries for building the ship. As long as you've got enough resources, you can um, reprint your ship once again. But hopefully that just showed it did work against the aircraft and how I set up the primary um, detection systems the other ship that will be part of the little omaha group um, will be a couple of these clemson destroyers i have built which are based upon the four piper uh, design i.e the four smokestacks and they've got uh, some 120 mil um, cannons some uh, torpedo launchers and they've got fitting in with the Night, late 30s and uh, uh, 1940s version we've got a fair bit more AA with from 3.7mm uh, guns and some 20mm AA mounts so they can take on a, a few different targets including submarines one of the other duties of the Omaha class was as a float plane um, tender with the some scout ship planes and what i've created is these sort of um float plane based on the kingfisher in some ways trying to make it small um but fitting in with the, the style with the central float and the two side floats it's also ar armed with some torpedoes um and infrared guided missiles for taking out submarines but most of the time it will just cir circle at 1500 meters only going into attack if it detects a submarine or a ship below um, about five meters depth it's a nice little cheap plane and we'll have two of these acting as scouts and anti-submarine uh, vessels so as a little combat test we'll give ourselves some white flares to give our group of the omaha couple of Clemsons and a couple of uh, Kingfisher Scouts and we'll see how it performs. Now we'll go against some regular forces and we'll give it a, a harpoon and a stinger and let's say a Uruquai and we'll try a charger and maybe a chorus so that'll put some missiles at us and our planes have been released so they should now go out and do their target watching although one seems to have a bit of a problem never mind so our systems are concentrating on the missiles working one of our clemsons did take a a hit from the missiles but let's see if it can do some damage to this harpoon as it's going through um, all of our AA guns firing quite happily at that as the primary target I think there let's launch some missiles and we've got torpedoes going in against the charger which is uh, of great value so the US ships I'm giving them quite heavy AA with the the Clemson's have got quite a good 20 millimeter AA barrage and the the Omaha's got it's has got lots of 40 millimeter in there as well all um, having a good go at this harpoon and seeming to do a reasonably good job to be honest 
considering we're just using simple weapons for most of our AA uh, defences. Um, the Clemsons do use their 172s. But most of the time it's the simple weapons are doing a lot of our close range defences. And we've got the Clams R firing out at this target, which is being scanned out by the Kingfishers. So that was the, uh, is that the Uruquai? I can't remember its name. So the Kingfishers staying out there at about 1,500 uh, metres. So the Crams, they'll be providing targeting information, hopefully. So the Crams can have a reasonable chance at uh, hitting this ship, which will be... The crams are hitting. It's a little small for the crams in general, but they are doing damage when they hit, I think. Yeah. They are they are they are targeting it, especially once it's slowed down. The APS guns seem to be good at getting it slowed. Now that it's basically gone stationary, hopefully our crams our crams though have a one degree inaccuracy, so they're never to be a hundred percent accurate. And that is the last white flares destroyed. And as I said, this is part going to be part of a bigger fleet. So a lot of those enemy ships would be aiming at the uh, large battleships. And this is protecting it, uh, protecting the battleships, uh, chasing down the small fast ships. Well, that's it for this particular build. So we went for a bit on the crams and detection systems. Still waiting for some of the updates to go through into the live before I really look at some of the APS changes, etc. Um, but they, they do look interesting. Uh, missile changes as well. We I haven't touched missiles yet. I'm mainly still trying to use guns at this level. So anyway, any comments? Please leave them down below as always. Got a few other people have requested and that was a little bug where, yeah, sometimes you'll get a ship onto a docking station and it starts flickering between two parts and then completely destroys your ship which is um, uh, a little interesting don't know why it does that um, but it's annoying anyway as I said that's it for now leave any comments down below keep playing from the depths and have fun <laughs>